Welcome back to episode five of Beyond the Glass. It's been a, a fantastic couple of shows. Hopefully, this is going to be our, our last show before the tour really starts uh, gunning through this lockdown period. Jenny Dunkoff joining me once again, all the way from Australia. Jenny, you're looking very pink and very, uh, very, uh, very young, actually. Very young. Oh, well, thank you. You've become nice right. in the last few months. Yeah, I've gone for a bit of colour tonight to. Uh, Counteracts your uh, your gym, your black weights, and your black your black shirt, and your your big beard as well, Jerry. You've been working working hard this past few months. I have. I've uh, been in the bushes, in the trees, just dealing with uh, all sorts of things outside. But um, as I say, we've got some big news, you know, coming up uh, with the PSA with uh, these events that are happening. Three events have been confirmed: one in Manchester, Jen. Uh, to in Egypt as well. So, I mean, that is, is, is wonderful, uh, wonderful news for the PSA World Tour for both, both the men and the women. Absolutely. I mean, it's the news we've all been hoping to hear. We, of course, found out the provisional calendar, but the, with the way the world is, there's still a little bit of doubt whether they'll actually get confirmed. So, fantastic stuff to hear that today. And hats off to PSA for... Uh, getting those tournaments on board I'm sure the players will definitely the players will hear from from a couple of them coming up but they're going to be absolutely thrilled to actually have a real target and a goal and to play some competitive squash and for all the viewers out there I reckon the viewing figures will probably be the highest they've uh, almost ever been at the Manchester Open everyone's been starved of the the pro squash so and it's going to be so exciting to see how everyone turns up after after quite a, you know, it's an, an unprecedented time. We've heard that word so much over the past few months, but everyone's coming into it not quite knowing what everyone else is going to be playing like. So a situation that we've never had before, but a very uh, exciting one for, for the viewers. Definitely. And we've got uh, CEO Lee Beachall, who's joining us in, uh, just to give us a bit more info on the details, the logistics, and what's actually going to be happening kind of behind the scenes particularly in Manchester, first off this season. Well, thanks for joining us, uh, Lee. We've got Lee Beachel here from the PSA. Uh, some actually really good news, some positive announcements today, Lee. Just talk us through some of those uh, upcoming events. Yep, we are back officially, which is great news, hopefully for everyone. Um, we have an event um, scheduled in Manchester, uh, 16th to the 22nd um, and then we will be going to Egypt for the World Tour Finals 28th to the 3rd of October and then on to the Egyptian Open um, on the 10th to the 17th of, uh, of October so yeah we've got three events planned so far um, having some good positive discussions about what's happening um, post the Egyptian Open, which is, um, which is obviously great news. Uh, nothing fully confirmed as yet. And obviously in this, uh, in this day and age, you know, November is, uh, feels quite a long way away. So, um, you know, everything is, is fairly short notice, I would say, compared to what we're used to. Um, but great news that we've been, been able to uh, confirm the three events that we've got on. Have you, have you um, adapted the draws slightly? Have you increased the size of the draws just to try and get as many players in as possible? Yeah, I mean, obviously, that's been a, that's been a main focus. Um, you know, we're all fully aware that, that the players have not had any earning opportunities or playing opportunities for, for probably six months. Um, we, we're trying to do everything that we can to, to expand draw sizes. Uh, Manchester, for instance, has gone from a 24 to a 32 draw. To, to just try and give you know as many PSA members the opportunities to play as we possibly can. Um, I'm not sure the draw. I mean, obviously the World Tour Finals is is set as the as the best eight players from from last season that will will battle it out there. Um, and obviously the Egyptian Open is a is a huge event at 48 draws for both men and women. So I don't I don't see the Egyptian Open draw being being expanded. But anything that we can do um, with the events that we've got confirmed. And also trying to get some, uh, you know, some of the, the lower events on that, you know, the, the tour team are sort of working daily trying to make that happen. So we're trying to do all that we can. It's going to be a, um, you know, it's going to be a, a sort of high level start, I, I would say, with the three events that we've got planned. But we're back and we're, we're sort of, um, you know, the, the players are back playing, which is, which is great news. And what will those be? Do you know in terms of it's going to be a bit of a bubble, a bit like the players at the it US is, Open yeah. tennis? 
at the moment. Yeah. So international yeah. players arrive, they go straight to the same hotel, yeah. testing so every day. Or... Yeah, so essentially all, pl all players that arrive in Manchester will have to provide a negative PCR test before arrival. So that'll involve players you know, wherever, wherever they're coming from in, in different countries. You know, they, they're going to have to have a negative PCR before they're allowed to travel. Um, once, the, once obviously they, they travel, they're leaving everything relatively late for Manchester. Um, essentially, once you arrive into, into the UK, until our event bubble starts, you are subject to the same quarantine rules as everyone else um, arriving in the UK. Which is which is a strict, you know, self isolation quarantine for, um, you know, for, for for everyone that gets here. So players are players are, are uh, arranging to arrive very uh, late, a lot later than they they would normally for an event like this. So the majority of overseas players are arriving on the fourteenth um, with testing due to take place at the venue. Uh, sorry, at the hotel um, on the fifteenth of the morning. Once, they're t once they arrive in the UK, they cannot leave the hotel room um, at all. All food, everything will be brought to their room. Um, once testing takes place um, on the morning of the 15th, we've got a, um, essentially a mobile laboratory that's going to be outside the hotel, which, which, will able, which will enable us to turn test results around within two to four hours. Um, Obviously, uh, you know the normal normal is 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 twenty four to forty eight. So, you know we're having things on site to to try and make this process as easy and as quick as possible. You know we're we're choosing to start probably at the higher end of of what some other sports are doing in terms of event bubbles, protocols. You know how strict we're going to be, um, but we feel it's necessary for a sport like squash in particular where. Close contact is is absolutely necessary from from the actual sports perspective, um, and trying to safeguard the players and 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 keep them apart as much as we possibly can outside of the actual um, match. So you know we we we're starting as strict as we possibly can, and hopefully you know as we go to different countries or we we we're, we're under different regulations, there are going to be certain things that we can relax a little bit, but you know. Safety is, is, is paramount at the moment and, and obviously securing the players and, and the event is, um, is obviously a huge priority. In terms of spectators at the event in Manchester, there's not going to be any. In Egypt, will that be different, do you think? Is it going to be a bit harder to control that in Egypt or not? Potentially, potentially. I mean, the, obviously the government guidelines in the UK at the moment is, is that there's no fans allowed in, in the venue. Um, I know that they are, you know, testing different capacities of crowds at different times, but that is very, very dependent on on the, you know, the national guidelines and 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 what the the country deems fit for for sporting events, and you know, we're we're no different to to any other sporting event. So we we follow the the, the guidelines of the country that we're in. What about from a TV perspective? Are we going to have any 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 additional elements possible? Um kind of soundboard, background noise, crowd noise, John Mazzarella recording of him blowing his nose? <laughs> um, not in Manchester. Um, in Manchester, it's going to be a, um, you know, there's going to be probably with regards to broadcast, there's going to be things that we'll learn throughout the week and try and add and move. And, you know, in a lot of ways, um, not having a crowd on site is maybe give us a little bit more scope in terms of trying to try different camera angles, um, you know, things things like that around the venue. But um, yeah, it's going to be a a very different experience, I would say, um, both from a well, certainly from a playing perspective, but also from a from a viewing and from a broadcast perspective as well. And um, yeah, you're probably going to have. Uh, a little bit more work to do, Joey, which I'm sure you're delighted about in terms of um, the you know the different things in between matches and and keep, keeping people entertained in your usual uh, jovial way. Well, I mean, the fact that I've got Simon Park commentator, he's a real workhorse, so that'd be fantastic because yeah. he'll really put his, his his pound of flesh in. So that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, yeah look forward to that challenge. Um, Definitely, but so like I say, it'd just be good to see the squash balls being hit and the guys charging around. I and mean, it'd be fascinating to see who's who's what what level every you know the, the men and the women. I are. the 
I mean, the whole thing is going to be, I mean, fascinating is a really good word because, you know, the, the environment is clearly not going to suit some players. You know, as we all know, some players are very social. They like the environment of an event. They like the sort of hustle and bustle of being, you know, within that environment. It's going to be very, very different. Um, some players are, are really not, you know, there's going to be a lot of adapting to do both to the event environment and also to the match environment. Um, as we all know, some people feed off energy from the crowd, the feed off the adrenaline of, you know, the applause and all the things that go with um, playing live sport. And, you know, that's not going to be there. So it's going to be fascinating to see who, who deals with that better. Um, and, of course, you know, Manchester, we're expecting to be probably the strongest 70 grand event that's ever taken place. Yeah. Um, It'll be interesting be... to see the viewing figures. The viewing figures are going to be pretty high. We hope so. Oh, we hope so. I mean, everyone's been starved of, um, you know, of professional squash for a, for a long time. And, um, you know, we, we're hopeful that everyone is as keen as us to get back um, playing and watching. Um, and, you know, we'll be doing all that we can to, uh, you know, to make that a good experience. Awesome. I really appreciate your time, uh, as always, Lee. And... Best of luck with what's coming uh, event-wise. And also, I'll be seeing you in person in Manchester. So, um, take yeah. care. From me. Hopefully, uh, hopefully less the facial hair, Joey, please. Yes. Yeah, yeah, have yeah. a shave before then, Joey. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Cheers, I'll, Beach. I'll... Thanks, guys. Take care. We'll see you soon. Bye. Well, Jenny, I mean, th this, is, this is what a lot of the, the majority of people that, that, that follow the sport uh, wouldn't understand and obviously we're involved with it and we get it straight from from lee beach or there but the behind the scenes logistics uh and the measures that are, are being taken to to make sure this event goes ahead is uh i suppose there's no choice and, and they've got to set a precedent psa haven't they particularly in the uk with this first event that's kicking off after the lockdown oh absolutely i mean it's it's testament to psa that they've managed to get past what you know they've been allowed to put this on and they've obviously put forward a, an extremely comprehensive plan of, of this bubble uh, for the Manchester Open so it's going to be interesting to see I won't get to see it but you can tell us all Jerry once you've been involved in it and all the players as to how it's going to go down uh, something that they've never never come across before but they're going to have to get used to it because it's going to be like that for the next few events and and rightly so it has to be you know if we want professional sport uh, we don't want any kind of risks of, of spreading uh, illness and, and stuff like that. So, you know, it has to be done 100% safely. And it sounds like it, it will be. So touch wood, everything's going to go go to plan and, and the players are going to have a good event. Well, uh, talking of the players, we've got it firsthand. Manchester Open finalist last year in the women's. Tesney Evans is joining us here today. It'll be really interesting to hear what Tesney's got to say and her thoughts coming into this Manchester Open in the, the next 10 days. So very happy to have our next guest. Nice to say hello to Tesney Evans all the way from sunny Wales. How are you doing, Tes? I'm good, thank you, Jen. How are you doing? Not too bad, thank you. Now, you promised me on WhatsApp just now that you'd be on your best behaviour, which isn't like you, so I hope you're not <laughs> going to stand by that promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I did say that I would be on my best behaviour. I'll try my best. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and have you been on... Uh, You've been on good behaviour this last few months. It's been more so for you, even longer than everyone else, not being able to compete uh, after that uh, bit of a shocker with your ankle in, at TOC. So a very long time. Yeah, it feels, like, to? it feels like ages. I actually figured out the other day that apart from the, I mean, I'm not sure the exact time, I think it was something like five or six minutes, I actually made the court in TOC. So you can't really count that as a match. I think my last four matches at the Worlds at the end of um, the first week of November. So it feels like it's been so long. Um, I think the only positive was with COVID for me, I got extra time to get my ankle sorted properly. Um, I was going to come back and play grasshopper. So I was just kind of just getting back to it and stuff like that. So um, yeah, then obviously the news came out that grasshopper was cancelled and from there just kicked off really. So yeah, I mean, I've, been keeping busy as best as I can, trying to keep well behaved and, and do things that we're all supposed to do. And um, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, in one way, it's been kind of nice to spend time at home and, and uh, that kind of thing, but it's been really long and uh, been quite tough as well. Yeah. 
Was that Tess? Is sorry, the ankle? That... Sorry, Jay, go on. Sorry, sorry, Jen, to butt in. I know you're excited. Um, so I'm, I'm good at that too. <laughs> Was that the first major, real major injury that you've had in your professional career? Um, I did the same ankle seven years ago um, in Manchester at the Nationals. Um, but I was like quite young and I kind of was just sort of starting to like play properly on the tour and stuff. And that, it was just completely different for so many different reasons. Um, but one way I knew how to rehab it, which was, which was good. Um, and I got seven years out of it, so he is hoping I get another seven years out of the ankle again. Well, no, yeah, you're not, you're not, you know, now you're kind of quite old now, aren't you? Whereas I know. Before you were, you know, young and, I mean, how old are you? 27. Jeez, so I mean. Nothing like, nothing like putting someone on the spot, is there? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you said about when you were young seven years ago. I mean, 27 years of age is, you're still a young puppy anyway, so. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm, well, I'm young you at say heart. That, always. Say that, I mean, it doesn't always feel that way, though. No, no, wait till you get to kind of 41, see how you're doing then. I'll let you know. You, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from that years ago, that ankle injury, I remember that. Um, you've actually done really well at Manchester. And of course, Manchester Open confirmed, announced today. In a couple of weeks' time, you must yep. be chomping at the bit to get in, to get involved with that. And you do have a good, good record there. Touch wood, you can look forward to some good squash. Yeah, absolutely. I think a talk for like myself and also all the other players on tour that everyone is absolutely chomping at the bit to get back. Um, and there's nothing like having that extra bit of motivation during training as well. It really, really helps. I know like in over the past however many months we've been in lockdown and stuff, it's at times has been really demotivating, not knowing if we're going to start back and all that kind of stuff. So it's really exciting and I'm absolutely like pumped that it's Manchester for the first one really because it's really close to where I live, so it's there's no stress of really travel and stuff. And um, yeah, I've got such a good record there as well. Um, I absolutely love the glass court there. I don't know why, um, but just got really good memories there. So hoping to make a few more. And, and if not, then it's a good place to start, no matter what results anyone gets. I think we'll just be happy to be back. And aside from the squash, Tez, a couple of other exciting things have happened in, in your life in the last few months can you guess what I'm sort of leading towards Jen's just desperate to one see was the exciting puppy. for me as well <laughs> uh Jen's desperate to see the puppy which I don't know where he is right now he's somewhere on the garden we'll leave him to it um yeah we got a puppy at the start of lockdown um which was really really exciting um and we had a rough time in our family we, we lost two dogs really close to each other and um that was really rough so one just before lockdown too and we ended up saying, like, if now's not a good time, when is a good time to get a dog? So we got a little puppy, which has been really good to keep the mind busy away from training and um, off-court stuff. And then, obviously, exciting, Liverpool win the, win the league. Woo, Had to mention it. <laughs> Had, Had to, to mention, mention it, I mean, <laughs> what a time. I mean, when, when COVID happened, I thought, it would just happen to Liverpool, that we're about to win the league and it stops. So that was good that it got mm. going again. Right. So it says you've spoken a bit about having to adapt within um, training outside of, of the courts when the squash clubs are being shut. So obviously going into Manchester, fantastic that it's on, but it's a very much an unknown situation. No one's ever played in a tournament with such protocols in place. You don't know what the venue's particularly going to look like, who you're going to be able to interact with. Is there anything, what's the feeling amongst the players? Is there some sort of apprehension or what are you expecting uh, to, be, to be going on in Manchester? Yeah, I mean, I don't really know what to expect. Um, I was, a few of us obviously have had numerous chats and said how, you know, it could come across. It's just going to be so different. I mean, we're all most, I mean, 90% of the players are very sociable. Um, and I think we'll definitely lose that side of it, which we're all completely aware of. And it makes sense, to be honest, like we'll just do, to have a tournament back on, we'll do whatever it takes, really. I mean, if we have to just sit in our own rooms and and do nothing and just literally go venue court um, to hotel, then that's what we'll do. And that's completely fine. I think we'd all rather do that than not have um, a competition on. So I think, I think it's going to be so different. I think it's going to take time for us all to adapt. Um, who knows what the venue will look like? I have no idea. I'm guessing, you know, there'll be nothing, nothing to, Oh, Joe, Joe, he wants to chime in. It will, it will definitely look, uh, there'll be breeze blocks on show, that's for sure. 
<laughs> I, I can't, um, of all the years that I've trained there and played there, I don't think it would change that much, but you never know. The PSA well, might, well uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's also true. <laughs> I didn't think of that. Um, I didn't, but sorry, I think, I didn't put a downer on it, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've got the old to go across well, the you Sorry? can't nip across to Asda for lunch either. Oh, I know, we always do that. Such a shame. So you'll miss out on that, you'll miss out on that. One last thing personally for you and just in your general goals with squash, obviously you've been playing some fantastic stuff up until your injury on the brink of the top eight, pretty much consolidating yourself in the top ten. Hopefully, fingers crossed, at some stage we'll have more of a consistent tour coming up. What, what are your ultimate goals in squash really to put you on the spot again <laughs> oh geez who signed up for this <laughs> you're very um, serious this morning very serious i've never asked you that before <laughs> um i mean yeah my my initial short-term goal is just to get some consistency in this season because i feel like i've missed a lot this season obviously with injury that's that can't be blamed but um just haven't played that much and i think it'll take some time i'm not expecting massive things when we get back um, not putting too much pressure on myself, really just getting back and just trying to find some form again if I can. And um, I think my ultimate goal, I would love to be a top five player. I think um, short term, obviously, I would like to make the top eight. Makes a lot of differences in the women's draws. Um, top eight, like eight seed to nine seed is such a big difference. But to be honest, the strength and depth of the women's tour right now, it's just ridiculous, I think. I think it's so strong. So I'd be really happy ultimate goal if I if I could finish in the top five and the end of my career I'd be really really happy yeah looking forward to your your basically your home stomping ground really isn't it Manchester <laughs> I know we should really like I hope I wish Manchester was kind of in Wales because then that would make it perfect where we can like <laughs> to sort of move across the border half an hour and, and that would be better what would it be called though what would the Welsh name for Manchester be um that's a good question I don't actually know no. <laughs> I don't know, you like you probably just add a, few, me, you, add a few like add a few consonants into it and yeah. you can make it up. I'm just sure. make it up. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell me in Manchester um uh when I see you in the breeze block building. Yeah, I'll see you at the breeze blocks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tez. Well thanks so much for coming on. It's been great to have a chat with you. Glad yeah, to hear you're uh, fighting fit. And yeah. uh, good luck in Manchester. Can't wait to see you play. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys. Well, great to hear from Tez there, Joey, as upbeat as ever, even though she did have reason not to be so at the start of the year, but she sounds in good spirits, uh, fully fit and raring to go. All the players are quite different in their own situations. Some obviously have had time to, to work on their bodies a bit and uh, recover from injuries. Others had momentum that then got stopped. It's going to be uh, quite exciting to see what the break, who the, the breaks worked well for. I mean, yeah, I mean, for me, I think there's going to be a bit of a pattern with those, those players that are a little bit more of the natural squash players that, that understand the game a bit, a bit more um, it, entirely and also uh, natural hitters of the ball. Um, I think they'll adjust quicker. Uh, the ones that, that, that have been working at the tactical side, the technical side, that they, I think, might be caught a bit short, even though there's the physicality there. So there's definitely going to be some quite drastic... Uh, variations which is just going to be great from from a viewer's point of view and a pundit's point of view it's going to be tough for the players but I mean this is it they, you know they, they've got to be thanking their lucky stars that we're suddenly in and we're going to start having these you know these events fingers crossed consistently going through to the end of this year um, but yeah I mean it's uh, Again, uh, Lee Beach will mention earlier in the programme about the atmosphere the, with the crowd, not having the crowd, uh, that is going to be a massive factor as well. Certain players are locked into that. They just love that adrenaline rush of appreciation for their rallies, their shots. And with that not happening, uh, at times Manchester can be a little bit, um, a little bit kind of uh, flat. Now, now. <laughs> yeah, sorry, but uh, for various reasons. But yeah, that, that, there's going to be a lot of factors they've got to cope with. But... Squash players, as you know, Jen, uh, firsthand, very adaptable. And, and, and I think there will be a, a quick adaptation to everything that's going on. And it's just about, you know, chasing that, that rubber ball around and, and playing and competing again. So, um, yeah, it's, it's all positive. 
Sure is. And we've got the chance to get some more insights from another player from a bit further afield this time. It's our pleasure to bring on India's best player, Saraf Gosal. Well, we've got another superstar here for today's show. We've got Saraf Gosal all the way from India. Great to have you on here, Saraf. How are you doing? You keeping okay? You keeping well? Thanks a lot for having me, Joey. Yes, uh, I think we're all trying to keep as well as we possibly can at this time. Um, I'm surviving, so so that's a big plus. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's hopefully you know we're gonna get back to some sort of normal very soon, because uh, it's tough living like this. Uh, but like I said, hopefully we'll see light at the end of the tunnel soon. Are you? Well, we just um, had. Just, um... just... Go on, Jen. Sorry. I was just going to mention we had Tez on just before talking about Manchester, but it, you know, as predicted, it seems like there's still different uh, travel restrictions for different nationalities. I saw you'd mentioned in an article that you were going to make a call on the event closer to the time. Are you, are you able to travel or not? not? So I think we're able to travel, but the issue is that it's, it's very, very tedious at this point in time. So uh, there are no international flights going out of my city. So for me to go outside India, I need to go to another city. So I'm in Kolkata right now. So I need to go to either Bombay or Delhi or Bangalore and then take a flight from there. Uh, there are some quarantine issues uh, in different cities. So I might need to go earlier to another Indian city, quarantine and then take another flight. Um, so I think the you know, difficulty in terms of getting flights into Manchester from my city is uh, is an issue in my head and uh, considering i'm not 14 years old anymore it's not easy <laughs> for the body to handle <laughs> handle all yeah. of that so <laughs> yeah you still look looking young still sir so it's not I did shave. I did shave so that I could look slightly older. <laughs> yeah. At, at least you did, sir. Joey's done the opposite. I know. I think you. Is that pen you've put on your face? Is that actual hair? No, Joey. I just plastered some on just before I came on. You know, got a makeup job done. I was going to say. I don't think. I don't think that's real. I. I, I don't think. I think you just wiped it <laughs> off now. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been able to? Um, be able to have you been able to get to a club and, and play and train did you do it for a period and then have they kind of adapted the lockdown with because you said cases are cases are rising every day aren't there there's an extraordinary amount of um, cases every day where you are yeah so i think in that sense like kolkata has been pretty decent like we've been one of the lowest like the lower number of cases in terms of the states in the country so um, squash courts opened end of june uh, in in Calcutta, um, I started doing like solo work on the first of July, and we and both Ramit Stanton and myself we both live in Calcutta, um, so we was just doing solo work for the whole of July, and then we started practicing together uh, on the first of August. Um, so we've had access to the courts. We've been going into the courts when the club is so called shut, so it's just the two of us uh, in the club. Um, both of us have been pretty paranoid with the whole situation. Like we don't close the like the back door of the of the court so that we can open it with our shoes. Uh, we use a racket to like switch the lights on uh, and things like that. Wow. Uh, but yeah, and like we sit, like normally we sit uh, behind the court is like a gallery and we sit right at the bottom. But like we've been sitting right at the top because we know no one goes up there to sit. <laughs> so that we sit there. Uh, so I mean, those are some of the weird things that we've been doing since going back to the club yeah i mean it's unlike you to have slight ocd with things but it's good to be take precautions <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah i mean there's no there's nothing to do right now man because it's so like it's an invisible enemy that we're fighting and we don't know how you're going to get it and uh, i live with my grandma who's you know okay, 84 yeah. years old yeah uh, cool. and, um, you know so i don't know i could be asymptomatic and carrying it i understand that you know i can't eliminate all the risk but and do whatever I can to minimize it to the greatest extent possible. And I think that's what we're going to try and do with the tournaments as well. Like yeah. PSA trying to do the same. Uh, so hopefully, you know, it'll all be a success. So have you picked up uh, any other hobbies or anything whilst we've had a bit of a break? I know you've been keeping fit and then the squash court's open, but any yeah, other I mean, I did, interests? Yeah, I did a little bit of like uh, dessert baking uh, earlier on in the lockdown mm -hmm. when everything was shut. So like a few cakes and, and desserts, like chocolate desserts and things like that. Um, over the last couple of months uh, in India, I've been uh, I've launched this uh, web series show called The Finish Line, 
uh, which is basically interviewing uh, eight like top athletes from India who've created like some of the most iconic moments in Indian sport and kind of focusing on on those particular moments that week or that month in which they you know became world champion or uh, won an Olympic medal and trying to focus on the you know the, their mindset, the psyche, the mechanisms that they use to kind of get over the finish line and, and you know win the thing and, and create create history to kind of go deep into it and I'm anchoring the show so it's kind of a different way of like an athlete kind of interviewing an athlete and kind of seeing trying to get like different viewpoints across to the general public and you know it's been a, a great experience uh, you know speaking to all these people because there's so much to learn from all of them and uh, it's inspiring and I think the people of India and of course the world as well I think um, they would love to know like you know what these people are about and to be able to appreciate what uh, they've achieved in their careers because it's it's unbelievable. So so that's been fun and uh, actually uh, the first episode dropped last week and we're dropping one every Friday at 6 p.m. Indian time. So it's it's been good. So I hope that goes well. So yeah, sounds fantastic, sir. That sounds excellent. really really cool. Yeah, excellent. That's that's, that's uh, and for you for your own education and like you say finding out the mindsets. I mean that's that's awesome. That's something you need to be pushing forward um, with that, isn't it? To break to that next phase. You've done so brilliantly with your career and obviously you're still gunning to push on. You want to get inside that top 10 and, and, and push on from there. Surely you still have a lot of aspirations. Yeah, I think, you know, as a person, uh, I wouldn't be doing whatever I'm doing if I didn't think that I could, you know, improve and, and get better and, and really push at the highest level. Um, I feel like uh, mentally and physically, uh, I'm in a good place. Uh, I think... Um, a lot of it over the years in terms of getting into that top 10, top 8, top 5 has been kind of centered around a little bit of lack of belief in terms of being in that group. Uh, but I think now over the last couple of years, especially that belief is a lot more strong in me. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that's come, come with the matches that I've played with the top guys and been very, very close and, and won a few as well. I mean, that was, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's fantastic. And we, we need the variety on the tour, as we say. So you're obviously doing a lot of training with your partner in crime, Ramit, as well. So he's, yeah. your, good, he's your good buddy. Is he from the, originally from the same city as you or is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah both of us are from, from Calcutta originally. Um, I've seen Ramit play since the first day he started playing. And I remember like watching him, uh, you know, in his first year of playing squash and, and telling my dad, you know, that, this boy is is ridiculously talented with the racket um and and i mean he he still is you know and uh, of course uh, he's at 51 in the world right now but you know the level that he plays in practice is is much higher than that and and for him i think it's a question of replicating uh, what he does in practice in a match which is easier said than done i mean all of us know how how different a match situation compared to practices uh, but you know it's brilliant to have someone of that quality to train with uh, especially at this time, because you know you can't really go anywhere, and you know I can't just pop over to England to train with with James and stuff in in Bondifract or go to David in at Cornell because of all the situation with the flights and stuff. So so it's been brilliant. Uh, he actually hit me day before yesterday because I think after <laughs> after chopping me up squash wise, he was like, man, I need to physically chop him up as well. So, <laughs> so that's that. <laughs> but, uh, but no, it's been it's been it's been great. So yeah. No, it's good. It's good. You can obviously see you've got a great love for him as well. So it's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Spent a lot of time together recently. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it's funny actually because we came back. Uh, well, I came back after Canary Walk on the twelfth of March, and I and the first time I actually saw him, uh, like we were speaking quite like regularly on video call and stuff like that. But the first time I actually saw him was uh, like the last week of July. And it was like literally like meeting my girlfriend after like forever. It was a big embrace, <laughs> the slow music, your yeah. eyes yeah, like, across the room. <laughs> yeah, like like he was there for solo at the club before I came in, and I came in, and he was on court, and then he turned back and he saw me, and he was like, "Oh, you're here!" And he comes out slow motion, and I'm also like oh, sitting down beautiful. like in slow motion. It was proper Bollywood, man. <laughs> Just one question for you, Surat. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Bollywood and, and possible kind of other stuff after after squash. Would you change your name to Gurab Social? I knew that was coming when the name bit came in. 
<laughs> I mean, that would depend on if PJ was uh, was producing the movie that I was acting in. Because <laughs> because you don't want your producer going to a going to a launch of the movie and calling you Gaurav so so when it's actually sort of <laughs> So 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 if, if if PJ is producing it, I mean, I wouldn't even wait for him to like change my name. Like, yeah, man, my name's Gaurav so so. <laughs> <laughs> oh brilliant oh sorry i had to put that in there because obviously it's got a fantastic history and it's all good fun yeah yeah, really yeah. Fun. um really lovely to chat to you and i'm really pleased that you're you're finding your ways and I, I, like jenny said i mean you could really um like with the logistics planning and what you're doing i mean it is unbelievably tough but you know, yeah. these are the sacrifices you've got to make to keep your family safe and also to carry on with your squash career. But you sound yeah. in a good frame of mind and, and really, I'm really excited to see you obviously playing in, in these events in Egypt and, and getting stuck into these these top 10 guys and, and getting over getting to that next phase of a terrific career. Mate. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Joey. And uh, thanks, Jenny. And uh... Both of you all stay safe. And I mean, I already feel like I'm almost at a tournament now because I'm speaking <laughs> to both of you all. Uh, so we're virtually at a tournament yeah. now. So hopefully physically we'll be there together very soon. So till then, take care of yourselves and stay safe. Well, Jen, uh, Surav, as jovial and uh, as ever, which is, is, is nice to chat to, but also really interesting about his kind of podcast interviews that he's doing with other Indian athletes and and getting a bit of a perspective on, on, on other sports and mindsets. Um, he's obviously got a background. He went to university. He's, he's looking to, to do other things. You're, you're, you're heavily now involved in the TV side as well yourself as a, really? a newly retired player. But no, it, it, he's, he speaks very well. And he's, he's obviously a very, very bright, uh, very bright guy. Obviously in love with James as well. <laughs> obviously, although there's a new man in his life. Well, he's always been there, but maybe in James's shadow. Ramit at the moment but no I think it's brilliant that he's uh he's exploring other things and his uh, the finish line that the the videos that he's been doing I've seen them on on his twitter feed and I've not yet watched them but as soon as I saw them I thought that's I know that's uh, an excellent idea for him because he's so articulate he's a great great boy great lad and uh he really has a passion for the sport and sport and uh, just life knowledge in general. So I'm sure he'll bring the best out of those high class athletes that he's speaking to, as well as passing on his, his own experiences and uh, as a current uh, world class athlete himself. So I reckon they're going to be great to watch and I'm, I'm pleased he's, he's doing things along, along those lines. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, this could be an end of a little mini era, possibly with <laughs> Beyond the Glass uh, on on online as it were we'll be looking forward to hopefully progressing again once the tour starts but it's been uh, fantastic joining you all the way from australia jenny um i can't wait to see you at some point when you're allowed to travel out of australia I know. it's a bit difficult same, right? it sounds like it's the same as surf it's uh, yeah international travel ban down under and then a two-week quarantine on the way back which has to be funded by yourself at uh, not your choice of location so yeah a bit tricky to travel but i thoroughly enjoyed our little chats joe there's no reason we can't keep them on keep them going no no absolutely <laughs> not we, get in, we can have invitees we can make them up yeah. ourselves but you must be in concert, um, not just when you want something but yeah <laughs> but it's been good uh, hope you get hope you get the razor out before manchester I will get the streamer out, sort it out, yeah. and um, but yeah, I know you'll be following and stuff. But good luck with everything, and obviously, I'll, I'll be in touch with you, and, and all the viewers will be hearing your dulcet tones. I'm sure um, uh, by the end of the year, at least. I hope, fingers crossed, at least. Uh, I just wanted to thank all the contributors, the players, also James Walcox, Nathan Clark, who've been fantastically adaptable and patient with uh, this mini series of Beyond the Glass that we've done here during the lockdown and um, I'm looking forward to seeing world-class squash and all the, all the interest and hopefully a lot of viewing figures on Squash TV to uh, see how this tour kicks off and, and, and see what we have in store for us in Manchester. But I wish everyone the very best. Jenny, take care, everyone else, and, and see you soon.